time here. Uh, I am happy to be your host, Stephen Colbert. Uh, let's see, so much to talk about tonight. Uh, I thought the show was going to be about uh, one thing, and then the other thing happened. So I'm going to talk about the third thing I didn't expect. Um, what happened was this afternoon we learned that Trump's Secretary of Labor nominee and suburban dentist you meet at the swingers party, <laughs> Andy Puzder, has withdrawn his nomination. Again, just to be clear, withdrawn his nomination. Just to be clear, this is not a scandal. He says he just wants to spend more time with Michael Flynn. <laughs> Puzder. Beautiful name, by the way, Puzder. Mm -hmm. Musical Puzder. name, Puzder. Yeah. Puzder. <laughs> the CEO of Hardee's and Carl's Jr. was controversial for many reasons. He had an undocumented housekeeper, uh, made ads that famously objectified women, and called his own fast food employees the worst of the worst. <laughs> well, that's not right. That's not right. Hardee's employees are great. It's the food that's the worst of the worst. <laughs> but, mm, mm, oh, I gotta say, oh, curly fries and a Coke. But even, even with all that, Republicans were still on board with Puzder until a tape surfaced of Puzder's wife in 1990 appearing on a talk show describing domestic abuse. That took him down. So who brought that tape to light? I mean, who is powerful enough to topple a cabinet secretary? You guessed it. Oprah! <laughs> Thank you, Oprah. Thank you. Thank you, Lady O. Oprah. Oprah can do anything. Oprah. Hey, quick follow up question. No particular reason, Oprah. Do you ever do any shows in Russia? <laughs> because uh, we could use some help. We just learned. From multiple intelligence sources, that Trump aides were, quote, in constant touch with senior Russian officials during the campaign. Constant touch, by the way, is also Trump's Secret Service code name. <laughs> I got constant touch on the move. Constant touch is on the move. Constant touch. Constant touch is coming backstage. Hide the girls. Constant touch. <laughs> Now, this Russian revelation obviously raises questions like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and what? Because this is Russia, America's greatest foe since World War II. I mean, worse than gluten. <laughs> now, intelligence sources are careful to say that they have found no evidence that Trump and the Russians colluded to steal the election, but... There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of smoke here? A lot of smoke. There's a lot of smoke. And you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's Steve Miller blowing it up Trump's ass. <laughs> and... <laughs> we do know that Trump's campaign was talking to the Russians a lot. And the frequency of the communication and the proximity to Trump of those involved, quote, raised a red flag with U.S. intelligence. Yes, intelligence was worried that once Trump got in the White House, he might raise a red flag. <laughs> the report also makes clear that these calls are different from the wiretap conversations between Michael Flynn and Russia's ambassador. It is never a good sign when you have to specify which secret call with a hostile foreign power you're denying. No, no, no. no. Oh, what? Oh, that act of treason. Um, tell you what, let me get back to you on that one. Next question, please. Anybody else? Anybody? He's on the move. He's on the move. Now, the White House vehemently denies all of this. Yesterday, Sean Spicer was asked about Russia's ties during America's afternoon daily spicy time. Can you still say definitively that nobody on the Trump campaign, not even General Flynn, had any contact with the Russians before the election? I don't have any. I, there's nothing that would conclude me that anything different has changed with respect to that time period. And, yes, there is nothing that would conclude him that anything different has changed. Heard me that and conclude ass out of talkie. <laughs> of course, of course, huge Sean Spicer fans. Big Sean Spicer fans here tonight. 
Of course, the president immediately took to the Twitter to defend his administration, saying, This Russian connection nonsense is merely an attempt to cover up the many mistakes made in Hillary Clinton's losing campaign. No, 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 no. Look, he's got a good point. Because if people learn about the mistakes made in Hillary's campaign, she might lose? <laughs> Buddy, you're the only one talking about Hillary Clinton. You're like that guy who's still talking about the big touchdown he made 20 years ago. By the way, Hillary won the popular touchdowns. <laughs> By the way, okay, Trump also called the story fake news. <laughs> then tweeted that the real scandal here is that classified information is illegally given out by intelligence like candy, very un American. <laughs> yeah, you know how it's illegal for Americans to give out candy. That's why everyone wears masks on Halloween. <laughs> Here's the thing, okay, it can't be both fake news and an illegal leak of classified information. Your Honor, I did not kill that man. The real criminal is whoever filmed me strangling him. <laughs> the, the president also held a press conference today. Did you see this? Mm -hmm. I didn't know this was going to happen. He held a press conference today because in the middle of all this insanity, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited the White House. As a courtesy, Trump asked his staff to put a 24-hour hold on retweeting neo-Nazis. <laughs> That's just good manners. That's just good manners. He's a lovely host. But it's funny because it's necessary. <laughs> but he did not, right? But he did not take the opportunity of the press conference to address any of the rumors that he's being run by the Kremlin. And the two hand picked reporters he called on were polite enough not to ask whether our country is over. Thank you. <laughs> So far, Trump and his senior advisors have not been directly implicated in any of this. The people mentioned in this report are the former Michael Flynn and summertime Trump campaign chair and man who keeps rope in his glove compartment, Paul Manafort. <laughs> Apparently, phone records show Manafort on calls to Russia, but Manafort denies it, saying, This is absurd. I have no idea what this is referring to. I have never knowingly spoken to Russian intelligence officers. It's not like these people wear badges that say, I'm a Russian intelligence officer. <laughs> well, how do you know? You were on the phone. You can't hear a badge. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> they could have. The guy on the other end could have a hammer and sickle face tattoo, for all you know. <laughs> but maybe Manafort really didn't know that he was talking to a Russian intelligence officers. I mean, it's not like every Russian person you talk to is a spy. I mean, I, some of my crew members are Russian. I mean, I, like, you, you've, you've never worked for Russian intelligence, right? Niet, niet, Steven. I've worked many jobs, never Russian intelligence. Oh, where, where did where'd you work for here? The Trump campaign. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good for you. Congratulations on the win. That must have been a surprise. Now, yep. you don't happen to have a badge that says I'm a Russian intelligence officer, do you? Oh, way. My badge says I am regular lady. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, anyway, thanks. Um, I'm sorry, what was your name again? My name? My name is Katie. Katie Name. <laughs> Katie Name, everybody. Thank you, Katie. We got a great show for you tonight. We'll be right back.